House of the Dreaming. Welcome to the collective. We have with us a very interesting guest, um, Deacon Gray, um, also known as Master Deacon, <laughs> a member of House of the Dreaming, our family. Thank you so much for being here at the collective with us. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, a pleasure, pleasure to have you. Um, uh, Deacon, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been involved with the community and uh, what initially drew you? I found the community in 94, actually, the AOL days. Uh, it, was, it was quite interesting. I didn't recognize what I was, but I recognized an interest in the community as a whole. And it, it's uh, quite fascinating to me to get to talk to people at that time period. I dropped out of uh, the community completely for several years after that and then rejoined it about 2003, 2004. And what drew you back? I'm sorry? What drew you back? Uh, honestly, it was, it was uh, an interesting situation. I ran into a, a lady that was into the same community that I was and she uh, recognized me for what I was. Mm -hmm. Not so much as a mentor or any of that nature. She just flat up said, you are a vampire, and I agreed with her, and you know, we developed a, a relationship from there. I didn't take much in the way of education from her, but it was still an awakening in itself, a recognition. A recognition. Now, you, do you identify yourself as a vampire? Absolutely, I do. Mm, might I ask in which way do you partake? Do you have a particular way in which you feed, um, a, a way in which you prefer to? I hate to use the term, what kind of vampire are you, okay? Because I understand that many vampires fit in more than one way, but they do have one particular way which they prefer. Uh, do you have such a preference? Absolutely. Uh, for me, sexual vampirism is definitely my forte. It's my area of interest and in study. Um, the aspect goes back to ancient times, from the beginning of time. You find that there are very definitely sexually vampir vampires involved, and you hear stories about them throughout history. Um, when I started looking at it, I found that the majority of our community, whether sang or sigh, used very strong sexual elements, and those strong sexual elements um, needed to be looked at further. There's still a lot of taboo in our culture about sexuality, and breaking those taboos and understanding what we are really makes a big difference in the ability to retain ourselves and our energies. And uh, have you done some of this research? Have you looked into it? Uh, what are some of your findings? I've spent a lot of time looking into it and I found that by and large vampires are very physical creatures. But they're misunderstood. Uh, sexuality doesn't have to necessarily involve the act of coitus. Everybody assumes it does because you use a word sex, but the reality is, is that sexuality is much deeper. When you look at interactions between people, an energy is built, and when that energy is built, there is sustenance there. And, and that can be everything from a very seductive smile, the interaction that you can develop between two pe people that you're not even involved with. The energy that built is there for the taking. and while you have to be mindful of, of a certain amount of civility, of course, you also have to be mindful that we are creatures that need a certain amount of energy. And drawing it where it is not used is very nice. And sexual vampirism is delicious. Mm -hmm. I expect mutually rewarding. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> For both uh, the vampiric partner as well as the donor. Indeed. I feel so too. Um, now, when you, when you were saying that coitus is not necessarily needed, were you also referring to perhaps different forms of voyeurism or uh, being on the outside looking in or absorbing the energy of what's going on the outside? Can you...? It, it can. By and large, I find that some element of involvement is required. Um, while you don't have to be a participant, there's still a certain element that, that you have to engage the individual. Um, being completely passive and just sitting in there doesn't engage you. It doesn't connect your energy to their energy. So if I meet a couple and I can inspire them to wickedness, um, 
I make that connection with them. And in making that connection, it's surprising the amount of energy that can build and the energy that they can take from the experience. I've dealt with more than one married couple where after a couple of naughty conversations, you know, they've taken some of that back with them and the amount of energy built up before they leave is there for me. Is it there for them? Absolutely. I hear it nonstop. You know, we never thought about it. Now they do and, you know, it's like you said, it is mutually beneficial. Now, I've heard you use the term Eros before. Now, Eros reminds us of Cupid. Um, and what you just said sort of also reminds me of Cupid. Um, can you tell me why you use the term Eros and how exactly you apply it? The, the Eros type of vampire is any vampire that dwells into sexual vampirism. Sexual vampirism encompasses so many different aspects of who and what we are that to try to put a simple label on it just wouldn't be sufficient. People love to use the term tantric. Well, look at the, what tantric means. I mean, define it. Tantric is a spiritual action, but not necessarily one that all of us fall into. I'm not necessarily going to spend my time educating myself and falling deep into the practices of tantric. Why? Well, simply it isn't needed. Um, drawing energy from all of the sexual interactions is something that, that can sustain us. And it does more than sustain us. It builds, and it builds in a way that helps many people. People will look at it and say, well, your reaction with one person is, is not going to, to create that bond between you that builds love. Perhaps not, but the energy departed from me to that person evokes in them a fire that can't be denied and it is something they will take with them. So what you're saying is that essentially you evoke this uh, fire, this desire, this um, rush of adrenaline in them from a sexual nature versus an, uh, a different type of emotion or something along those lines. So it comes from a, a sexual uh, desire and then it is that desire that you feed upon. It is that energy that emanates from them that you feed upon. It is indeed. Uh, every person you meet has desires. Some of those desires are darker. Some of those desires are a lot lighter. And it's not up to the sexual vampire to jump in and be involved in every situation. But it is important for the sexual vampire to understand that they need to feed. Um, you see a lot of people who are of that nature have some really significant issues over time where getting involved in relationship after relationship after relationship, you know, they quickly become termed, you know, termed as womanizers and, you know, other less pleasant uh, uh, words, but the reality of it is most of them simply have not learned who they are. They haven't learned that they don't have to take things to extremes. That they can draw energy in many different ways. And I think that it's important that, that they become to terms with that. The greatest psi vamps out there come to terms with their ways of drawing energy, how they interact. And I find that most of them use sexuality. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, um, Master Deacon, do you have a site where we can access some of this information, some of your insights, or maybe that we can get in touch with you, our viewers can get in touch with you, and maybe ask you some questions and pick your brain? <laughs> uh, currently, I'm working with, uh, with Jason Constantine on uh, sayingspace.com, and I've listed many of my articles and, and such there, and I'm continuing to update it. And I also run the... Uh, the e-zine, which is the Graveyard Press. And the Graveyard Press is uh, under renovations, but it, we expect it to come back soon. Okay, terrific. And you can also be found at House of the Dreaming. Um, Absolutely. I would like to thank you very much for joining us today with your opinions. That was really quite terrific. Uh, something new for the viewers out there. And uh, thank you for joining us here on The Collective. Um, I'm Madam X of House of the Dreaming here with Vampire Lounge, and I'm looking forward to zooming in on your perspectives.